Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. We are going through the entire book of Revelation. We are now uh, in the middle of Revelation chapter 12. We're entering into uh, a lot of the bigger chapters on the devil. And I know this could be one of the reasons why we don't like reading Revelation. We don't want to read about the devil and it makes us scared. But you know, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't scare me. In fact, the devil doesn't scare me. Not, not at all. It, it's, it's the whole idea of reading the end of the book. You know, you, you, you typically don't want to read the end of the book because you don't want to know how it ends. But the great thing about Revelation is if you read it and you study it, then you do see how it ends. The world ends with God as the victor. Satan is defeated. In fact, Satan will try and try and try. We'll see that in today's reading. And he will fail every single time. He is not a winner. He is not a winner. And uh, we've got the winner. We've got God. You've got God. Um, we were reading a little bit that the devil is uh, the dragon, right? In Revelation 12. And we got up to verse 5. And um, the, the woman in Revelation 12 is Israel. She gives birth to a son. That would be Jesus, right? And from the moment the child is born, the devil goes after him. Verse 5 says, She gave birth to a male child, Israel, gives birth to the Messiah, who is to rule all the nations, right, with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and to his throne. So Jesus goes back to heaven at the end of the Gospels. And the woman flees into the wilderness, where she has been placed as a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. So this last part, um, apparently, you know, Jesus has done his work. Obviously, he goes back to heaven. Satan can't touch Jesus anymore. So Satan goes after Israel. Satan can't attack Jesus. Satan goes after Israel for three and a half years. It says, Now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels, the archangel, fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fighting back. But he was defeated. Satan was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven, which means Satan's been living in heaven this entire time. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Now, this is a great passage. And I think it flies in the face of a lot of current belief about the devil. A lot of people believe that the devil is a beautiful angel who wanted to usurp God's power and so God cast him out of heaven. But see, the truth is, Satan has always been Satan. He's always been himself. He's always been the deceiver. He's always been the accuser. And he lives in heaven, currently, right now. He is in heaven with God. And you can see right here this, at this end time event, right, this end time event, that then there is a war. The war between the angels of heaven and the angels of the devil takes place as an end time event. It didn't happen a long time ago. It happens at the end of the world. And at the end of the world, Satan is cast out of heaven. So, and you can read some of that in the book of Daniel too. So Satan is hurled down to earth. Verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the people and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our guard. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives, even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So Satan's cast down to the earth. Heaven rejoices, right? Glad we got rid of that guy. Man, don't let the door hit you, right? Which means Satan is going to spend the rest of his days out on the earth physically, which is going to be terrible, right? Because the Bible says, you know, hooray for heaven, but sorry, earth. That's what it really says, right? So if, G if the devil lives in heaven right now, what does he do up there? I mean, what's his job? Well, verse 10 tells you. It says, The accuser of our, of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them, accuses us, day and night before our God. So Satan's job is to be the lawyer, to be the accuser, that he stands in the throne room, and he brings up your name, 
and he throws out all your sin to God and says, do you really want this guy? Do you really want this lady? You see what she does? You see what he does? You see what he thinks about? You see what they're doing? Satan is bringing all of your dirt to the throne and he accuses you day and night and he asks permission to touch you, to touch your life the way he touched Job. You want to find out what the devil does with his time? Read the book of Job. That's a great book. That's what he does. He accuses us before the throne and he asks for permission to touch us and to meddle in our lives. Verse 13, and when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman, that would be Israel, who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two thing, the two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and time and half a time. So three and a half years. Again, this is that three and a half year period. Israel flees during the reign of the Antichrist. So whatever uh, reign or reach or power the Antichrist and his ten kingdoms have, um, it affects Israel to the point that Israel picks up and leaves. They go and live in the wilderness in a place where Revelation here says that the Antichrist can't get to them, can't touch them. And verse 15 says, Then the serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from its mouth. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's more attacks, right? We don't know what the attacks are, but the, but the Antichrist and the devil, they're trying to do that same thing that Herod did uh, to the firstborn children. Just anything, right? Attack, attack, attack. Find ways to attack. But the Bible says Satan doesn't win, right? Satan doesn't win. Verse 17, then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God, that would be us, right? Christians, and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. So this is how this chapter ends. But but here's the takeaway, okay? Here's what I really want you to see. Satan goes after Jesus at the beginning of the chapter and what? Fails. Then in the middle of the chapter, Satan goes after heaven, right? Attacks Michael and his archangels. Fails. Fails and then gets kicked out of his house, right? He gets kicked out of heaven. So now he's on earth. Goes to attack Israel. Fails. Fails, 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 right? What do we have to be afraid of? What do we have to be scared of? The world, yes, is going to bombard you and attack you and do its best to pull you away from God. You ever felt like the whole world was against you? That's why. Because it is, right? And Satan's doing his best in heaven right now, uh, accusing you of all your wrongdoings and asking for permission to meddle in your life. But you have 1 John 4, 4 as your reassurance. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Who is in the world? Satan. Who is in you? The Holy Spirit. God, right? So the Bible is your heads up. That's your plan. That you know Satan is no match for God. He can't win. He's not going to win. He might distract you. He might uh, try to attack you, try to lure you away, but he can't win. Do your best to stay on the winning team. And if that's something that you've been putting off, I would just say don't. You know, don't put off uh, reading your Bible and getting to know more about God. Don't put off getting baptized if that's been something that you've been wanting to do. Don't put off going to church, belonging to a Bible study, teaching a Bible study. Don't put these things off. Don't put these things off. Don't, don't fool yourself. The Bible, Revelation, it definitely says that this is a, a battle. It doesn't have to be a physical battle, right? But it definitely is a spiritual one. And so the thing you want to do in a spiritual battle is to arm yourself. And the first thing you can do is arm yourself with knowledge. And that's what we're doing here in this study, right? Arming ourselves, equipping ourselves, learning more. But the other thing is the, the dedication and the loyalty to God. You are on God's team. And yes, God wins. God is victorious. But it doesn't mean that we can't 
equip ourselves and, and learn more and know more. And I would say, don't, don't put those things off. The world is going to try to pull at you and, gonna, and it's going to, you know, oh, what would you rather do? Watch TV or, or read your Bible? Oh, well, of course we're going to pick watch TV, right? We're going to pick watch TV and TV is probably going to win every time. What would you rather do uh, this holiday season? Talk about uh, politics with your family or religion? You're probably going to talk about politics, right? But what's really important? The devil would love you to talk about politics this holiday season with your family. Because the devil is all about division. He wants to divide. He wants there to be arguments. He wants there to be pain. Jesus brought peace. Jesus brings love. Jesus brings grace. We need to talk about religion more. We need to talk about God more. Let's talk about the winning team. Because we're on the winning team. See you guys next time. Bye.